everybody. Let's try this problem here. So just a quick note, right? This class is about analyzing circuits, but really the goal is for you to become an engineer who designs circuits. But, you know, you have to gain experience analyzing circuits that other people design first, and that's the stepping stone to get you to be the one who designs circuits. So for example, you take a look at this. This is an op amp, so it's an amplifier. Um, here on the non-inverting input, that's a constant. On the inverting input, this is changing because of that switch. So this is an inverting amplifier. And then I see a capacitor here on the feedback. And we know that the current for a capacitor looks like this. It's proportional to the time derivative of the voltage. So I know that this is an inverting, integrating amplifier. For example, if you have, if you feed it a square wave, what's an integrator? It'll look something like this, right? Like if you go the other way, what's the derivative of this? The slope is positive and is a constant. So right here, right here the slope is positive and it's a constant. The slope here is negative, constant. So here, negative. It's positive here, positive, negative here. But then this is an integrator, an uh, inverting. So it's going to be opposite like this. Right, so here the slope is negative. And so then over here it's positive. The slope here is positive, so this is negative. Right, so then when it's time for you as an engineer, you have a client to say, I need an integrator an inverting integrator. You're like, oh, I've analyzed those before. It looks like this. Right? So that's where, as you gain more experience analyzing circuits, then that's the step to become a designer yourself. Okay, so let's check this out. I'm gonna label the node over here N for like the negative, and then here P for positive, for the negative, for the inverting input, positive for the non-inverting input, right? And then you have all the skills you need. Let's say, pick a node here, this node right here, N. Let's do KCL at node N, right? So I'm just gonna write the current positive going out. Okay, so going out toward the left over here, what's the current going this way? It is Vn minus, so that's the voltage right here, minus the voltage right here, divided by this resistance, right? So the voltage here, Vn, the voltage here is what? 14, divided by the total resistance. Okay, so we got 33K, 47K, so that's 80K. So 80,000, all right? All right, so now what's the current going this way? So the current going this way, that's a capacitor, right? So it's C dV dt. Um, if the voltage is uh, this way, I'll call that the voltage across the capacitor. Because I drew the current going this way, I drew the voltage going this way. So this is for the voltage across the capacitor. So C dV dt, this is the voltage across the capacitor here. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that label right here. Um, it's totally fine if you label the voltage the other way, no problem. Then you just have a, this would be a minus sign instead. Okay, and then what's the current going toward the right. This is node N over here, right? And it looks like this. What? So then we have the current here, the current here, the current here. What's the current here? I'll just call it I N, this one. Okay, so that's KCL and let's assume right here, this is an ideal op amp. 
for an ideal op amp. Ideal. What does that tell us? That means the current going in here and in here is zero. So that means I n is zero. This one, right? The current going into the inputs are zero. Okay, also what else? The voltage here is the same as the voltage here for an ideal op amp. Vn equals Vp. Okay. What is Vp over here? Let's take a look at it right here, this section right here. There's that 45, let me just draw it again right here. It's the 45 volt source. There's a 20K resistor. And then there's a an 80K resistor. So this is a 20K resistor, 80K resistor. And then this is the reference down here, right, right here. Okay. And we want the voltage VP, which is across here, right, right here. This is VP. Now that looks to me like a voltage divider, right? So VP is source voltage, which is negative 45. Make note of the sign, right? See the minus over here and the plus over here. So, so minus 45 times 80K over 20K plus 80K. Okay, so that's 80 over 100, so that's 0.8. Sorry, let me keep, leave what I wrote over there. Okay, so 80 over 100, so 0.8 times 45 is 36. Okay, so VP is negative 36, which is the same as VN. So you see right here, this is negative 36. And this is zero. All right, now what is V right here? What is VC? Let's take a look at right here. So here's the capacitor. And then I said across here is VC. But then what is the voltage here? It's the output voltage. What's the voltage here? It's VN. Right, so look at the capacitor, the way the voltages are labeled. Vn minus V out equals Vc, the voltage across the capacitor. So I'll say that again, right? The voltage across the capacitor is this minus this because of the way I labeled it. Okay, so now look, this goes right here. What is the time derivative of, I'm again, this is right here. I'm just rewriting it. Okay, I just rewrote this right here. Vc is Vn minus V output. Now, this is the output voltage here, which is a variable. This is negative 36 volts, which is a constant. Whatever that value is, it's a constant. What happens when you take the time derivative of a constant? It's zero, right? So then when you take the time derivative of this, right, that becomes zero, and then you're just left with minus dv out over dt. Okay, so a lot of substituting. So let, let me point that out again. Vn is negative 36. It goes right here. This d by dt of vc is this minus d by dt of v out. And the current over here is zero. So let me rewrite all of that where I have more space. Actually, let me just copy this. Then I'll just rewrite it where I have more space. Okay. Now, Vn was negative 36, um, and then D, this became minus dV out, OK? 
Okay, and then this became a minus. And then this is zero. Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit. Um, what am I move this on the other side? And then this is, let's see, that's minus 50. Yeah, minus 50 over 80,000. Okay. And then let's move the C over here. Okay. All right. Um, why don't I just plug in the value? What is C? 2.5 microfarads. So 2.5 microfarads, 10 to the minus six, right? And here we have five, oh, 50 over 80 times 10 to the three. Okay, so let, uh, let's clean this up a little bit. So 50 over 80 is five over eight, 10 to the three, 10 to the minus six is like 10 to the minus three over here. And then I can get rid of this 10 to the 3, and then 5 eighths. Okay, and then 10 to the 3 in the denominator is like 10 to the 3 in the numerator. All right, and then let's see. 2.5 times 8 is 10, 20, right? So this is 20. 5 over 20 is 1 fourth. So 1 fourth times 10 to the 3. So there you go, 1,000 over 4, 250. So it's minus 250. I mean, I could have, maybe it would have been faster to just punch it in the calculator. Okay, so let me just rewrite it. dv out over dt equals minus 250. All right, and what are we trying to solve for? Voltage and then the time. Okay, so how do we solve this for voltage as a function of time? You do separation of variables. Move this on this side. And then we can integrate like this. From t equals zero to some time t, v output at t equal to zero to some v output at some time t. Let's integrate this. At zero equals minus 250 t minus zero. So there. You can just move this on that side. There you go. There's the function. Well, what is this? The output voltage when t equals zero. Let's take a look at the situation here. So we were just told that the voltage on the capacitor is 56 volts when the switch closes at t equal to zero. So the voltage across the capacitor here. So let me just draw that over here at t equals zero. Here's the capacitor. It looks like this. This was Vn on this side. This is Vo on this side. And then, I already forgot, okay. Like that in the picture. So it looks like this in the picture. Okay, at t equal to zero. It's this much. So what is the voltage Vn? Vn was negative 36. So then what's the output? Right, just take a look. I don't need to have this here. All right, let's just take a look at this picture. Which side is more? See the plus sign over here? This side is more, right? So VO minus VN equals 56, right? Because the plus sign is here, minus sign is here. So this side is more, this side is less. So that's why I like this. Let's move this on that side of the equation. And VN was negative 36 plus negative 36. So that's 20. So the output voltage at t equal to zero 
is 20 volts. So this is 20 volts. I'll just write it over here. There you go. Okay, so that's the function. All right, so this is the voltage. The output voltage is a function of time. It looks something like this. Right, where this is 20 and then the slope like here is negative 250. <clears throat> is this true? Can it be 20 volts? Let's be super careful about it. Do you see the power supply right here? 25, negative 25. We have to be mindful, right? The voltage can never exceed 25 over here, nor can it exceed negative 25 over here right it'll it'll saturate okay so uh, the question is what is how much time let's read the question here how many milliseconds will the output voltage equal zero so when does this hit zero let's just look at our equation right here when does it when does this equal zero? So zero equals twenty minus two fifty T. And we're looking for that time. All right, so just so solve that. So T is twenty over two fifty. There you go. Okay. So that was a lot of information, but hope that was helpful. So keep on practicing. And if you have questions, let me know in the forum. Otherwise I'll see you in the next video.